fire than hot, blazing three straight victories on the game's final play. The cardiac cards have joined the party and don't intend on leaving anytime soon. In our hearts and in our minds, we're planning on going down and kicking the hell out of Dallas. Yeah. The Dallas Cowboys welcome the challenge, but have their sights set on a much grander prize. We can play like we're capable of playing, then I, then I like our chances against anyone. So we know that we're going to have to play as well as we can possibly play if we're going to achieve the ultimate goal. It's the Dallas Cowboys and Arizona Cardinals on ABC's NFC Wild Card Playoff. of today's NFC wildcard game as the Dallas Cowboys return to the playoffs after a one-year absence to take on the Arizona Cardinals, making their first postseason appearance in 16 years. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, along with Joe Theismann and Paul McGuire. It's great to have you with us. The Arizona Cardinals got into the postseason by winning an NFL record seven games by three points or less, including the last three on the final play of the game. With Jake Plummer at quarterback, the Cardiac Cardinals are never out of it. Well, Mike, they really aren't. And Jake believes that he can pull the game out and his teammates believe that he can get it done. It's going to be very important in this game, though, that they match the Cowboys' intensity right from the beginning. They do not want to fall behind to the Dallas Cowboys in this game like they have in the previous two meetings this year. Now, the Cowboys swept the regular season series. In fact, they won 16 of the last 17 games in this series. And in addition to that dominance, they have a tremendous edge in playoff experience, especially with the big three, Paul, with Aikman, Irvin, and Smith. Now, well, they had their woes in December, December, but with Aikman, Irving, and Smith, last week it looked like they wor worked out their offensive problems. Now, Michael Irvin told us yesterday, he said, all we want the office to do is to do their job. We will do ours and more. We will not allow this team to lose. The crowd anticipating the status of Deion Sanders. He is active, but will he start today? More on that next on ABC's NFC Wild Card Playoff. ABC Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Commentary for today's game can also be heard in Spanish by pressing the SAP button on your remote. For more on the status of Deion Sanders, let's go to our colleague on the sideline, Solomon Wilcox. Thanks, Mike. You know, Deion Sanders hasn't played in six weeks since he sprained his big black left toe back on November 15th. Now, he has not practiced, but he did practice for the first time this week, and he has been activated for today's game. As a matter of fact, he's just been told that he will play in today's game despite not coming out for warm-up. In a dramatic fashion, he just jogged onto the field just moments ago. I talked to Dave Campbell, the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys, said that Deion Sanders wanted badly to play in today's game, but he is not expected to be at 100%. Mike? Now, Solomon, you could count on him to make a dramatic entrance. Chan Gailey <laughs> and Vince Tobin meeting for the third time this year, the first playoff game as head coaches for each. Chris Jackie, who has been the star of the last three games, the hero with game-winning field goals, joined the team mid-season. Tyrone Hughes deep to receive along with Jeff Ogden. We are underway in Dallas. Hughes to the 29-yard line. 
The Dallas offense has Troy Aikman at quarterback. He has the best completion percentage in the playoffs of any quarterback in NFL history. Smith had over 1,300 yards rushing, fourth in the conference. Irvin had over 1,000 yards, but only one touchdown. The offensive line can dominate, especially on the left side with Allen and Newton, both selected to the Pro Bowl. Emmett Smith to the 32. The Arizona defense has had trouble against the run. Smith and Wright have had success rushing the passer with a combined 19 sacks. At linebacker, Miller leads the team in tackles. McKibben is second. Interceptions, remarkable for a middle linebacker. A big play secondary. Lassiter had a career game last week, tying an NFL record with four interceptions in one game. Simeon Rice, they count on him for pressure from the right side. Aikman to throw. Good protection. Over the middle and dropped by Billy Davis. Hit him right in the numbers. Can, can I just say something right here? for two weeks about Billy Davis. And you said if there's one guy, Joe, that has to step up for this football team, it's one. Well, it is, Paul, and for the simple reason, because you know Irvin's going to get Aeneas Williams. And so he's wind up with more one-on-one -on -one coverage. Look at how open he is in the middle. Ball hits him right square in the chest. He can't let the ball get to his body. He's got to catch it with his hands. Good protection. Short pass. And should be a first. They will mark at the 40, about a yard more than they needed, and Dallas will keep the chains moving. Aikman with a tremendous cover the best. I'm going to cover this guy all over the field. This is great coverage by number 35 in his whips. He can't cover him any better other than knocking the ball down. Perfect throw, great catch. Great job of Irvin shielding off Aeneas Williams with his body. Aikman again, double pump, throw short. This one is complete. Now they rule it incomplete. Up at the 45-yard line as Irvin couldn't come up with that one. Mark Smith putting some pressure on. I think this is going to be one of the key matchups for this football game. How well will Aeneas Williams do against Michael Irvin? The last time these two teams played, Michael Irvin had a streak of 117 games catching balls ended by this Arizona, Arizona Cardinal defense. There's Dave McGinnis, the defensive coordinator. He just doesn't want to leave his corners on an island too much. Aikman hasn't been pressured much at all, and this one is caught at the 49-yard line by Hayward Clay, only his second catch of the season. And you know, you can't complain about the coverage. I mean, the coverage has been perfect. Pat Tillman is the man that's in coverage number 40. I mean, you can't play anyone better than this unless you knock the ball down. Watch the coverage on the top. That's just total concentration. Also, the accuracy of Troy Aikman. No one in football, I don't believe, throws the ball as accurately as Troy. Third and a yard. Emmett, there's a flag down. There was movement up front on the Dallas right side before the snap of the ball. Ball start, 79 offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Eric Williams, the right tackle. What happens when an offensive lineman wants to try and get outside? He anticipates the snap count a little bit. You're going to see number 79. Eric Williams knows he has to try and get outside and get on Jameer Miller, so he's trying to get a little bit of an edge. Couldn't quite make it. So instead of third and one, it's third and six for Dallas. When you're that big and you blink your eyes, they see it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffers and Sherman Williams come in on the third down situation. Bjornsson, one of the tight ends in the slot. Cowboys face five guys. This one's knocked away. Jeffers got his hand on it and couldn't hold it. Tom Knight was there with him defensively. Well, I, I tell you, you've got to say a lot for this defense, Joe. This, this 
defense of the Cardinals, they are on every single man. But you know something, Paul? I don't think you can, you know, yes, they are, but the other thing is the Cowboys have missed two very simple catchable opportunities to be down within scoring range. Toby Gowen will kick it away with 12.09 to go in the first quarter. Metcalf hustling up to make the catch at the 15. And gets only a yard out of the return. A 40-yard punt, one on the return. Dexter Copley with that great speed downfield to make the tackle. First quarter, no score, big D. If the Dallas Cowboys needed an emotional lift, they just got it. Deion Sanders trots on the field for the first time in six weeks. The crowd went crazy. Mike, I think with Deion, he can't be what he's been in the past. If, I, if I'm the Arizona Cardinals, I don't stay away from him. I go right after him. Adrian Morrell dives for five. The Arizona offense run by the NFL's cardiac kid, Jake Plummer, has led nine fourth-quarter comebacks in only 26 career games. He has weapons. Morrell over 1,000 yards. Sanders was second in the NFL with 89 catches. The offensive line continues to be a major problem. Lomas Brown, the only proven performer up front. Larry Sanders is the single setback. Plummer to throw. Dion missed the tackle and very close to a first down. The pass complete to Rob Moore. I like what Jake said yesterday. Jake the Snake said, we're going to go after him. What can he do? What can he do? One interception isn't going to hurt us. He said, if I'm going to go after someone, I like to throw the ball all over the field, and here's the guy I'm going after. you got to like the matchup with Rob Moore on Dion. You know Dion hasn't practiced in six weeks, and the game takes a different pace from practice. I watched him work out on Thursday. He moved okay on grass. This is not grass, and this is not practice. Morrell. In the two regular season games, the Arizona Cardinals had a terrible time trying to run the ball against Dallas. Here's the Dallas defense, let their best up front, only four sacks, though. The rookie Myers starts for the injured Kavika Pittman. Linebackers with great speed. Godfrey good against the run. Copley with 4-4 speed. With Deion Sanders in, the best cover corner in the game, he takes away half the field. The rest of the secondary can blanket the other half. Little swing to Larry Sanders. Lowers his head, shakes a couple of tackles, and gets it to the 34. You know what I really, I like talking to Lomas Brown yesterday, he said about our hurry up offense, he said, it looks like we don't know what we're doing. There's a whole bunch of guys standing around, That's all. and Jake decides if he puts his fingers together, then we're going in the huddle. He wants to talk to us. If he doesn't, we just mill around until he gets the play. Reminds you an awful lot of what the Cincinnati Bengals used to do under Sam Weiss. They, it's a little bit of a sugar huddle, about four or five yards from the line of scrimmage, then come up and get ready to go. Jarius Hayes in as an additional tight end. Mario Bates, the running back. And Plummer wants to throw under a lot of pressure. Throws on a run incomplete. Dion got a piece of it. Or Brock Marion, rather, got a piece of it. That's incomplete. George T. Check it. Had a flashback there. <laughs> Tyrone Hughes will drop deep for the punt of Scott Player, who has averaged 41-7 this year. So they don't want to risk Dion's bad toe on kick returns. Player hangs it high. Straight up the middle, Hughes got 11 yards on the return after a punt of 39. Nothing, nothing, first quarter. The playoffs, the Cowboys and the Cardinals from Irving, Texas. Telecast about the stellar postseason and the experience for these three stars for Dallas. All among the all-time leaders in their respective categories in the postseason. These guys have carried Dallas since they came to the franchise. Emmett. 
little stutter step, breaks it outside, lost his balance, and goes down at the 44. Chan Gailey talked about wanting to throw the ball early and try to get that lead, something they've done two times before against Arizona. They've enjoyed a lot of success throwing the football against Arizona, but they also were able to run the football. The time when they do want to run it will be to protect the lead at the end of the game, though. That's when they've gotten a lot of their yards. Smith again behind Johnston. Got a good block from his fullback and goes to the Cardinal 46. First down, Cowboys. I'll tell you, they had a, all the beef in this in, in this lineup. They have two tight ends. They go with two big backs. They, they go with uh, Daryl Johnson. He comes up in the hole. And then you have one little running back, and Emma Smith isn't little, and they get the first down. In two games against the Cardinals, they've scored more than 36 points a game, almost 400 yards, 167 rushing, and nine offensive touchdowns. And we saw last week the offense is back and healthy after a slump. Williams hit in the backfield and stuffed for a two-yard loss. Carl Simpson waiting for him. It's one of those plays that you stick into the playoffs. Williams starts outside, comes in motion, takes the pitch, and don't be surprised if something else is going to happen off of this particular type of a play, whether it's a reverse or something else. You see him come in motion. Now he's trying to just turn it into a sweep to the left, really. I wouldn't be surprised if that is the foundation of something else somewhere for the Cowboys later on. Simpson, who was a two-year starter for the Chicago Bears, was not deceived. Here comes the blitz. Aikman wants the screen. Williams. What a nice play by Ronald McKinnon, the middle linebacker, fought off a block and made the tackle. That could have been a big game. This is, I mean, it really is an outstanding play. When you have your linebacker, he's caught on the inside because what he's got to do, first of all, is look for run. It is a screen pass to the outside. And Ronald McKinnon just plays it perfectly. He just sits and waits and waits and watch him. He's in the middle of the field. He steps up. Uh-oh, screen. I got to get out of here. Now I got to find the guy with the ball, which he does. Back out to the outside. They pick up three yards. Third and seven as Aikman goes to the shotgun. Aikman with time. Got it to Jeffers. First down. The Cardinals gang tackle him, but not before he reaches the 26, a gain of 19. Aeneas Williams yesterday told us, Joe, that what we have to do is hit Aikman in the mouth. We've got to go in and hit him. They have not even been close. They haven't gotten close to him, but also take a look at the job Aeneas is doing on Michael. He's going to lock up on him physically and stay all over. That's why the receivers, whomever it is, plays opposite Michael's got to make plays. You see Jeffers slide into the soft area of the zone. Troy will put it exactly where he wants. Dallas's deepest penetration of the game so far. Emmett Smith gets to the 20. We saw Emmett running last week and he ran very well, got a couple of touchdowns, and we saw a few games before where he didn't run very well, but it, it just looks like he believes that those holes are going to be there. I think, I think really last week when we did the Redskin-Cowboy game, you started to see not only Emmett, but this entire offense gain some confidence in their running game. Second and five. Emmett behind Johnston. Hit at the line of scrimmage. This time falls forward for maybe a yard. Rashad Swinger, who is replacing Eric Swan at that defensive tackle spot, was on the stop. When we watched films of the last Arizona-Dallas game la the other day, one thing I noticed is that they featured the tight end down in the red area a lot. It's a good mismatch because you've got linebackers who are tall in some instances, and we saw McKinnon like to fight up. Plus, you got Michael out there on the knee, so the tight end would be a good place to go with the ball. Aikman so far has hit four out of seven. He's had two drops. Only threw one that wasn't on the numbers. to throw and then throws it away. 
Oh, outstanding coverage. There wasn't a man open. Aikman does the smart thing and throws it away. Take the field goal. We talk so much about Aeneas Williams on Michael Irvin, but this is here's the coverage here. Aeneas is all over him. There's no place to go, Michael, no matter where you go. That's Corey Chavis, the rookie, on Billy Davis. And Bjornsson in the middle was tied up by both linebackers. That leaves it up to Richie Cunningham, who will try a 36-yard field goal. And missed it right. Just outside the upright. Cunningham, who would have missed only six of 35 all year, misfires from 36. Nothing, nothing first quarter of our NFC wildcard playoff game because Richie Cunningham missed a 36-yard field goal, an oddity for the Dallas Cowboys. In the regular season, they were the best in the NFL in the last six years, combining three kickers, and they have been superb in postseason as well. Cunningham struggled a week ago. Play action by Plummer. In trouble. Throws on the run. What a catch! Frank Sanders, one hand! Holy cow, what a grab! I, you know, I know the grab is great, but what Plummer did is unbelievable to get that bar, ball that far down the field. He, you're right, Paul. He does a terrific job, but Frank Sanders has not practiced all week because of a banged-up knee. Now he gets up inside on Kevin Mathis, turns him around, and really is a second thought. Look at that stop. Put the hand up, let it hit it, come on up. On first down, they go back to the run game. Nothing there as Larry Centers gets a rare carry. But I, I'll tell you what, Jake is the snake. I mean, when you watch what he does, now, you watch it, Copley's coming on his backside. He steps up. Now watch this. Look at this throw. He is getting hit, and the ball goes 50 yards down the field. That's incredible. Wonderful play by the quarterback and the receiver. It's now second and eight. Centers goes out as a wide receiver. Plummer. Intended for centers, knocked away at the last moment by Mathis. Joe, forget about his playing ability. When we sat down, we sat down with him twice. Do you like him? Jake, I like I think I liked him a lot out of college just because of what we're seeing. He has a great ability to improvise. This ball is supposed to go out to the left. Now he can run, but he feels the pressure and he sees it. Looks a little bit like a number 16 that made a throw uh, to a guy by the name of Clark in a playoff game. Clark. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it. Third down. Comes the blitz. Shovel pass to Morrell. Touchdown. What a call against an all-out blitz. Mark Tressman, the offensive coordinator, when I had a chance to visit with him, said, we're going to go after him. We have to go after him. What a terrific play call in a situation when you anticipate the blitz. You get it. Here, everybody comes up the middle. Jake takes the shot. There isn't anybody left to tackle him. And one of the great things about that play is when you see all those people coming, your natural reaction is to get rid of the ball. He held it as long as he could to make it perfect. As a quarterback, you'd say it's veteran patience, but with a guy like Jake, it seems like he's made plays like that all his life. Chris Jackie for the point after. This crowd is stunned. The Arizona Cardinals in a very rare playoff appearance have taken the lead over the Cowboys. Cowboys seven to nothing first quarter the 59 yard pass to Sanders which was the big play in the drive the longest offensive play for the Cardinals this season. Tyrone Hughes and Jeff Ogden are deep. Hughes from the eighth. Struck down at the 27. First quarter, 7 0, 238 to go. Plays early, 7 0 with 238 to go, first quarter. 
And in the playoffs, their first winning season since 84, their first playoff since 82, an NFL record seven games won by three points or less. They have not won here in Dallas in 10 years. Emmett Smith hit immediately by Jameer Miller and dragged down. ABC's NFC wildcard playoff game is being brought to you by Miller Lite, an official sponsor of the NFL and the Super Bowl. The Home Depot, America's home improvement coach. Cadillac and your local Cadillac dealers. And Coca-Cola Classic, always the real thing, always Coca-Cola. Second and ten for the Cowboys. Aikman with time again, throws underneath, complete to Billy Davis, and he takes it up to the 30-yard line where Corey Chavis brings him down. You know, it's, it's going to be a long day for anyone that plays across from Larry Allen, number 73, the <laughs> all-pro guard. Now, Simeon Rice is the guy there trying to get upfield and trying to get to the quarterback. And with Larry Allen, it's almost an impossibility. Watch number 73 on 97, Simeon Rice. Push him out, gets his hands on him. As strong as arms are. Now it's feet. Back inside, no place to go. Pro Bowl starter in two different positions, guard and tackle. Four wide receiver set for the Cowboys. Here comes the blitz. Aikman still has time. Throws underneath. That will be right at the sticks. I believe it's going to be short. I don't think he got up the field enough to get the first down. He's probably short by a half a yard. Patrick Jeffers made the catch and then was drilled and driven back. Let's see what kind of a mark he got. And if Joe is guessing he's short, we can just call it a first Almost down and get on with it's, it. If the ball, no, new year. It's a new year. If the ball's over the 37, he gets it. But I think he's, I think Joe may, may. Paul, don't say something you regret here. I'm not going to finish it. Okay. It's a new year, but it's the same Joe. Oh, the man is O for his career. At least you're consistent. I was, I was, I was trying to bail you. I was trying to get you out. I didn't, I didn't want you out there on a limb with me. I, know, I was going I the other said, way. I was really good. I said if it gets to the 37-yard line, I got And it is at the 37, a first down. The, the Cowboys can't continue to just throw short pass. Sooner or later, they're a big... Aikman, who's had wonderful protection. Too high in the flat for Emmett Smith. Tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, ABC, home of the Bowl Championship Series, presents the FedEx Orange Bowl. Florida battles Big East champion Syracuse, led by quarterback Donovan McNabb. The Gators and the Orange Men return to the Orange Bowl for the first time in over 30 years. You know, you just said that Emmett, that ball was a little high. Well, Simeon Rice was there, and Emmett was so happy that that was high. Draw play, Emmett Smith. Nothing doing. Mark Smith got him around the ankles and brought him down. And Mark Smith is a guy who has been a wonderful surprise in the last two years for this club. Well, they finally got him back. And with the nine sacks, he has made an impact, Mike, but... You're going to lead the Arizona Cardinals in this game if you're the Dallas Cowboys, and it's going to get tougher and tougher for you to try and get something going. The Cardinals are gaining momentum. And right now, this team is sky high after their offense scores first. And they will not get a playoff. That is the end of the first quarter. The Arizona Cardinals surprising the Dallas Cowboys. It is 7-0. Now a word from your ABC station. A third and 11 as we start the second quarter at Texas Stadium. Three wide receiver set for Troy Aikman. Tremendous protection again. Aikman throws. Picked off by Chavis. There is a flag down on the play, however. Corey Chavis, the rookie from Vanderbilt, on the return. If it stands, it's his third interception and a return of 19. What Corey Chavis does here is he has his eye on Aikman, and he breaks for the ball. They're going to call him on pass interference. Well, actually, they're going to call him on holding, but... He knows where the ball is going before Billy Davis ever gets out of his break. 
Corey Chavis, Billy Davis, number 87, and he, you're absolutely right, Joe, he is breaking on the ball. Take a look at him. Billy Davis comes down. Chavis is on him. He's got him. He turns. He goes up in the air. I'm going to tell you, this is a How terrible ball? call. How is that holding? This is a bad call. First, if it's anything, it's pass interference, which it's not. There's no way he was holding him. He's just going for the ball on the out move. He beats Billy Davis to the spot where Troy Aikman is throwing the ball. That's a tough break for Corey Chavis. He was a backup safety early in his rookie year. They moved him to corner, gave him the starting job on the end of November. They may never get him out of the lineup. He is a tremendous young player. Break for Dallas. Let's see if they can do something with it. Aikman to the corner. Chavis knocks it away. Intended for Billy Davis. Let's go to Solomon Wilcox. Thanks, Mike. After being tackled by Cardinals defensive tackle Mark Smith, Emmett Smith came off holding his right wrist. The trainers are now taking a look at it. it. Appears to be an injury to the right wrist or right forearm area. We have not been told yet as to the extent of the injury, but we'll inform you as soon as we get that information. All right, Mike? Solomon, that would be a tremendous blow to the hopes of the Dallas Cowboys, not only today, but if they can survive the opening round going anywhere further in the playoffs. Williams is in a tailback. Four-man rush to the outside incomplete Aeneas Williams was all over Michael Irvin you know what's happening here and, and, and you gotta understand now Emmett Smith is out there's three stars there's Aikman Smith and Irvin Aeneas Williams has taken Irvin out of this ball game he is out of it as far as so throwing the ball now they're down to one star down, down to one star the guy that's throwing the ball and he has no one else to throw the ball to here's Aeneas Aeneas this time instead of going after Michael just waits on him a little bit now Michael's Michael really isn't expecting the ball I think Michael felt he was a decoy on that one third and ten Aikman steps up in the pocket rifles it nearly intercepted McKinnon, the middle linebacker, that would have been his sixth interception of the season. The last four balls that Troy Aikman has thrown, one was intercepted, the other two could and should have been. I mean, the Cardinals are all over where Aikman wants to throw the football. And he has no one to throw the football to. Toby Gowen will punt it away. Metcalf, the dangerous returner, waits at the 15. Pretty kick. Metcalf backs up to the 14. Nowhere to go. Dives forward for a yard after a beautiful punt of 45. Patrick Jeffers made the tackle for the Cowboys special teams. Back in a moment. Bill Bidwell, the owner of the Arizona Cardinals. His family has owned the team since 1930. He has seen one playoff game in their history, 1947. One playoff victory when they won a championship as the Chicago Cardinals. Hoping to see his second here today. Plummer unloads for more. Tip and incomplete. Mathis got a hand on it at the end. I like the call, though. I feel like that momentum has shifted to the Arizona Cardinals. And what they're going to do is try and keep the pressure on the Cowboys by continuing the no huddle. You drop back. Jake has plenty of time to make the throw. Good protection. Steps up, hangs it up. Doesn't quite put it out far enough as Rob Moore is almost there, but Mathis gets a hand on it. Larry centers the single setback. Plummer calling the play at the line, and now centers goes out as a flanker. Plummer on a little half roll to Moore. Had to catch it behind him, and Mathis took him down after a short game. The main reason why the Arizona Cardinals are in this no-huddle style of offense is that they feel more comfortable at this pace. They feel it's more comfortable for Jake Plummer and more comfortable for his offensive line. Mark Tressman also says it wears out a defensive line as the game goes on. But when they do that short huddle, though, they can also get some people in the game that they need to get in the game. It's not a true hurry-up offense. Third and six. Cowboys showing blitz, and Plummer wants to change the play. And they will wave this play off. They didn't beat the clock. Oh, 
Mark Preston, the offensive coordinator, he's got to be shaking his head a little bit. How in a no huddle can you not get a play off? I'll tell you the guy who's got to shake his head is Leon Lett. He was out covering center, and he's pointing back in the huddle. He's still pointing back and saying, you know, someone else ought to get this guy instead of me. But see, here's the problem. The Cowboys really don't have the time to substitute the people they want to match up with the personnel packages that Arizona is putting out there. This is the hurry up that hurt them in the second half of the second game in this series. Three-man rush this time. Plummer. Metcalf got it at the 33, <laughs> went right down to the turf and picked it off for a gain of 19. When he told us yesterday, Jake Plummer, where do you like to throw the ball? He says all over the field and to everyone. Well, when you look at the field like he does and see it all, step up and then hit Metcalf. Look at this throw. It is absolutely perfect. Plummer has hit six out of nine, 106 yards in the first half. Under pressure, steps away from it. Hangs it up in the middle of the field, knocked away, and intercepted. Mathis! Poor decision that time on Plummer's part. It's a jump ball, and Mathis wins it for his third pick of the season. A big break for Dallas. They're still down 7-0. Trailing 7-0, Emmett Smith, who had a sprained hand, is back in the ballgame. And Dallas will start from its own 37-yard line. Also, Mike, to keep momentum, I think the Cowboys have got to try and put the ball down the field, look for a big play offensively. They set up in the eye, Smith the deep man. Aikman to throw. Underneath, to Moose Johnston, and he's knocked down to 42. The AFC-NFC Pro Bowl live on ABC Sports Sunday, February 7th at 6 Eastern. Don't miss the NFL's best in the final game of the season from Honolulu. The Packers' Reggie White playing in his final Pro Bowl. Second and five for Dallas. They're on 42. Emmett. First down and more to midfield. Well, this is the one thing. I, you know, you can go with the ball down the field, or you can pick up a sure five or six by going up in the middle of, of the line. The offensive, this is a, a tremendous offensive line that Dallas has. The low. Still tremendous. <laughs> and big. And big. Emmett again. Same place. Six yards this time. See, Paul, I don't disagree with you, but both Chan Gailey and Troy Aikman told us this. You don't score a lot of points running the football. Early. Yeah, I, I just believe that they're going to have to get some big chunks out of the passing game as this game develops to try and get points on the board. Because Arizona's going to try and do it through the entire game. I agree with you, except that the, the other young problem he has is he doesn't have anybody to throw the ball to because his main target is covered. Davis and Jeffers have not exactly stepped up to take the pressure off of Urban. Hammond on a little toss. Another first down, this time to the Cardinal, 36-yard line. They found something on that right side. Well, Jameer Miller, Miller, we talked to him yesterday, linebacker. And Daryl Johnston, number 48. Jameer Miller is 95. Watch this block. Right at, at the whole point of attack, Johnston, he hits him with the shoulder, and you notice how he turns him? Watch him turn him to the outside. There's just no chance for Jameer to make a play. And who was the happiest guy when Daryl Johnston came back? Emmett Smith. Williams will give him a breather. He's carried three straight times for 22 yards. Williams with the carry. Breaks it outside. Williams, 20, 15. Pushed out of bounds by Kwame Lasseter. 
It's a gain of 20. That's just an excellent job by Sherman Williams seeing the entire field open up in front of him. It's easy when you got Nate Newton, 61 on Jameer, coming out again. Watch 61 on 95. Bam! Right there, the hole. He knocks him back into the backfield. Now watch what he does. He goes up inside. Williams shows nice patience, gets everybody pulling inside, and then has the speed to turn the corner. First and 10, Dallas. They've rushed for 65 yards as a team in the first half. Williams, it's an option. He keeps, he had Emmett Smith on the outside. Oh, Jameer Miller just makes a sensational play, though. He stays with the ball carrier. Remember I said before that Sherman Williams coming in motion is going to get the ball again and something's going to come off of it. The reason why they ran the reverse the first time was to see what Arizona wanted to do defensively. This time now, you feel like you got an option. Watch this, it's going to be coming right at you. Daryl Johnston is the lead blocker. He, he fakes the pitch, turns it up inside. Jameer does a nice job of putting him down. Second and seven for Dallas. Emmett on the toss. Cardinals get a little penetration this time. Lassiter comes up and makes the hit, but look at the power of Emmett Smith as he drives inside the 10 to the 9. Michael, look at the patience of Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith just waits. He knows he's got time. He's got Daryl Johnson out in front of him. He's got blockers in front of him. So all he has to do is be patient. That's experience. This drive comes off the turnover when Plummer threw an ill-advised floater deep over the middle. They've run the ball six straight times on this drive. Now make it seven. Emmett actually tripped over his own man. He'll pick up a couple to the seven. He'll be less than a yard shy of a first down. Say he's short, Joe. You're right. No. <laughs> no. I, go ahead. I have no more limbs left on my trees. I've cut them all off. He only gets the guess on the first one in the game anyway. Newton is the injured player. Nate, the 13-year veteran, slow to get up. We'll check on his condition when we come back. Nothing Cardinals. First big decision for each coach. Chan Gailey's going to go for it, Joe. Mike, I think here play action would be an ideal situation. He's run the ball seven consecutive times. You got your three tight ends in there. Arizona's got to figure. We got to get up and try and stop the run. Emmett hit in the backfield. What a job by the Cardinal defense. Mark Maddox, the former Buffalo Bill, got tremendous penetration. Eight straight times around the ball. Well, no that's, that's why I felt like play action might have worked at that time. You know they're going to be firing the gaps. And it's been, a, it's been a real problem for the Cowboys on offense. They've not been able to pick up the short yardage, and they just didn't do it again. Arizona Cardinals would be nervous, this being their first playoff appearance in eons. They're not playing nervous. Well, you got to go back three games ago. They were in the playoffs. They had to win all three games in order to get here. This is their fourth playoff game. Well, I go back to the 92 Dallas Cowboys, who were the youngest team in football, a lot of inexperience, wound up winning a world championship. So what does experience really mean? It means to play well on that particular day. The Cardinals, after a great defensive stand, trying to grind it out on the ground. And Adrian Morrell is horse collared and buried by Hervin McCormick. Well, Michael, this is their fourth rush in this game, and they have gained a total of nine yards. So they've had trouble the first two games with, with Dallas running the football and are having troubles again. And they, I don't think they can win it unless they start running it a little bit. Morrell again. Stumbled and dives forward to the nine. As we said, the Cardinals, none of them who were in an Arizona uniform have playoff experience, but 10 players from other teams have played in a combined 47 games. The Cowboys have a combined 238 playoff games together in the form of 26 players. Third and nine, Arizona deep in its own end. Draw play to centers. 
and he's brought down at the 14 solid tackle by Omar Stoutmeyer. That's just a tough play to run for the Arizona Cardinals because Stoutmeyer is the assigned spy to Jake Plummer. So he's not going to leave the middle of that defensive formation. Deion Sanders is back for the punt. Don't you dare kick that ball to him. Kick it out of bounds at about the 40. Player low line drive kick. But they get a break because Sanders couldn't get up to it. A punt of only 39 with the roll and no return for Deion Sanders. ABC's NFC wildcard playoff game is being brought to you by Gateway. Get more out of the box with a Gateway. Ford Explorer, built Ford tough. And Prudential, bringing strength and stability to America's families through insurance, health care, real estate, and financial services. Dion looks healthy. If they put him back on punt returns, you have to assume he is. Well, he makes the call of how healthy he is, and adrenaline plays funny things in a game. I mean, it can be sore as heck tomorrow and was sore yesterday, but today, just feeling fine. Dallas threatened to score on the last drive and couldn't. They'll start from their own 47. Aikman floats it high. Knocked away, nearly intercepted by Chavis, who has had a sensational game. Billy Davis went over his back to try to get the ball. Well, they got Aeneas Williams on one side, covering Michael Irving. So they figure, where are we going to go? Joe, we'll go over to Chavis' side. Yeah, Wrong. Ch well, he's already picked one off that they call back on a bad call. Here, he never loses sight of the ball. Now, Billy Davis does a nice job of trying to go up and make a play on it and really keep it away from Chavis. Chavis part of that tremendous defense at Vanderbilt. Look at the ball control so far. The Cowboys 16-53, but they have a goose egg on the scoreboard. Aikman can't find anywhere to go, and Aeneas Williams with the pick! This Cardinal secondary has been sensational. Well, this time here, Aeneas knows he has help deep on Michael Irvin, the outside. So he just plays the ball from Troy Aikman. The big thing about Aeneas Williams, talking to him yesterday, he says, I can't necessarily be concerned about Michael. I have to play the ball. He gives Michael a different look. This time he jams him. But now he knows he's got backup help, so he trails underneath. Looks back to play the play on the ball. He's got Latimer back there for the deep zone. Aeneas Williams has been in the Pro Bowl five straight times. 39 interceptions in the 90s. Better than anybody in football. Plummer wants to throw on first down and throws complete to midfield. Got it to Rob Moore. The one thing that the Arizona Cardinals, every person we talked to, to they said, we got, if we can stay close at the half, then we really have a chance of beating this team because we are a much better second-half team. How about a head? Yeah, well, I mean, that's going to help. They didn't too. think of that. No, they, they really didn't. They wanted to be close. Plummer short set. Nice catch by Moore. Mathis hit him, and he hit him right at the sideline. You know, one of the situations where Arizona has a little bit of an advantage where Dallas doesn't, Arizona defensively can put Aeneas Williams on Michael Irvin and basically blanket him. If you've got a Deion Sanders, you can put him on one of the receivers, but then you line up a Terry Metcalf, a Frank Sanders, and a Rob Moore. Who does he wind up having to cover? Jake has a lot of weapons. Sanders was second in the NFL in catches this year. Moore led the conference in yards a year ago. And this is Morrell. He is wrapped up by Randall Godfrey. I said in order to win, you got to run the ball. But it's obvious that this Arizona team can't run the football. They haven't been able to run the ball for two games, and they're not running it here. Randall Godfrey last week had an outstanding game. He's number 56. You see him just make the flow. He fills the void, and the guard can't get back to make the block on him. The one thing the Arizona Cardinals are going to have to do in the offseason is address the problems on that offensive line. Third and nine. Blitz coming. What a shot by Darren Woodson. 
It's an incomplete pass. Woodson just had a free run at Jake Plummer. I'm going to tell you something. Jake Plummer is not a big guy. Now, when you sit down looking at him, he's not as big as these quarterbacks that you see. But I'll tell you, the punishment that this guy takes is incredible. And he stands there and takes it. Watch him go back. Here comes Woodson. A free runner off the side. Jake doesn't oh. see him, plus he comes late thinking he can get rid of the ball. He's going to have to go back and check to see all the body parts are still there. <laughs> they nearly got to that one. There is a flag down as they ran into the punter, Scott Player. Hayward Clay was the man who was putting pressure on. Michael, this is a question now. Either running into the kicker or roughing the kicker. If they get the penalty, if it's running in, it's only a five. If the big guy, it's the first down. You got it. Because it was fourth and nine. They knocked him down. You know, I look at Scott Player, the punter, he built a lot like I was when I played. Dumping. <laughs> now, they're going to wind up refusing Running this. Running into the kicker, 83 defense, penalty has declined, first down. That will leave the ball for Dallas at its own 11-yard line. As they say, it was running into the kicker and not roughing him. Let's take a look. Well, the kicker goes down. This is Scott Player, number 10. Has he just run into him? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there was no intent. And, and nice job of acting. But the smart thing to do is take the ball down there on the 11-yard on the line. Give it to him there. 321 to go in the half. And I have to admit, I thought this was going to be a shootout. And it's 7-0 Arizona. And the reason why it's not is because Arizona's defense has stepped up and kept it that way. Worst starting position for Dallas in the game. Aikman looking, 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 throws short and complete up to the 20 yard line it's a good thing Aikman has had tremendous protection because he hasn't been able to find anyone to throw to easily little half roll throws underneath complete to Davis up to the 22 that should be a first down Patrick Sapp, the former Clemson quarterback turned linebacker, made the stop. Dallas is losing by seven points. We're coming up to the two-minute warning, and they're just, Joe, they're just walking around like they've got all day. And, and against this defense, the way Arizona's playing, they don't have. 2-11 and counting in the first half. Aikman with the out this time. Complete up to the 38-yard line to Patrick Jeffers. A gain of 15, and for one of the few times since early in the game, Aikman able to throw on time and get a big play. Two-minute warning, back in a moment. For two Golden Globe Awards, Mr. Mayor, do you think you're going to win? I'm here for the duration. So it's time for your massage. Okay. All new Spin City, ABC Tuesday. Coming up on the Toyota Halftime Report, we'll go back to our New York studios and join Chris Perman. He will have highlights of the Bills and the Dolphins. Congratulations to Miami, and Tom Jackson will be there with his analysis of the wild card picture. Sherman Williams is in for the Cowboys, first and 10, at their own 37, down 7-0. Aikman has to step up, throw short, and knocked away. Williams, and there is a flag down on the play back at the 27-yard line. Aeneas Williams is all over Michael Irvin. He can't breathe. Well, Simeon Rice gets held going by the court. I think it's him. Holding, 79 offense, 10-yard penalty, still first off. Excuse me, other side, Eric Williams on Wadsworth. Eric Williams is number 79. Andre Wadsworth is 90. He goes by, gets his arm around, and he tackles him. No, you already pulled him down, Eric. So first and 20 for Dallas. 155 to go in the half. 
Aikman swings it into the flat. That's the second pass he has thrown in the flat. This one to Bjornsson that he's missed. Well, what you're doing is you're asking Eric Bjornsson to run a running back's swing route. And he's going flat, and Troy's expecting him to turn it up like Emmett Wood or like Sherman Williams would. You've got a tight end running basically a running back route. That's why the timing is off. Part of that is also it's a new offense under Chan Gailey. Bjornsson only caught 15 balls this year after 48 and 47 the last two seasons. Second and 20, it's a screen. Williams. Great defensive play. The second one today by Mark Smith. Here was a guy whose draft status was hurt by a knee injury as a senior at Auburn. Wasn't drafted until the seventh round, but he has been sensational in a Cardinal uniform. Timeout, Arizona, back after this. From Dallas. Aikman airs one out. Chavis with great position on Billy Davis, and he knocks it away again. Corey Chavis is learning from a great teacher in Aeneas Williams. Corey Chavis is a rookie. Talking to Dave McGinnis last night, he said, I wandered into the practice facility at Arizona at 8.30 at night, and there was a light on in one of the rooms. I thought somebody left the light on. It wasn't. It was Corey Chavis sitting there studying films of the Dallas Cowboys. Metcalf waits just inside his own 30. Arizona with a chance to get decent field position in the closing stages of this half. They put some pressure on going low line drive. Metcalf on the bounce. Got one block and got it back to the 38 yard line. ABC presents college football. Let's see what Arizona See, I don't think wants the, to do. I don't think Dallas can just drop back and let Jake pick and choose. I think they have to go after it. Plummer to centers and he dropped it. The sure-handed Larry Centers had at least a 15-yard gain on that play. All right, so Dallas decides that they're not going to rush him on first and 10 and drop back. Centers has a big gain if he catches the ball. I don't think the Cowboys can afford Jake Plummer, Plummer the time to buy and run around and make a big play. I think they have to go after him. But they're sending Randall Godfrey, who the 56, but they're putting him in a... Well, he's on the end of the line, so they are sending four people. Plummer with time. Moore can't make the catch. It was a high floater. Teague came over along with Mathis. Well, and Teague, now Plummer's 8 out of 15. Teague's the guy. Teague's the, Teague's the guy that times it perfectly. Moore is there. He's just waiting to, to go up on the ball and take it at the high point where you're supposed to. Mathis is coming in from the bottom side. But watch on the top. Here comes Teague. Bam! Also, Leon Lett has been silent. The Cardinals have done a good job on him. That's Dishman passing him off to Lomas Brown. Third down for Arizona. Plummer throws on the run. Moore, first down at the Dallas 47-yard line. And a timeout for Arizona with a 101 to go. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I don't think you can get pressure on Jake Plummer with four people. There's too much room for him to roam and make plays. And he has certainly proven over a six-year career, the years in college as well as the last couple years as a pro, that he can get it done moving around. Dave Campo has got to make some decisions on how to handle Jake. Take a look at the two quarterbacks, what they have done. You would think it would be exactly the opposite with a three-time Super Bowl champion Troy Aikman and Jake Plummer in his first playoff game. But Plummer has outthrown him by 50 yards and has the only touchdown pass of the game. If you're going to rush four on, on Jake Plummer, the two outside guys must stay outside. Because if you let him get outside now, he can throw anywhere he wants to throw. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up, and Plummer hits Metcalf. Metcalf into field goal range down to the 23. The ball came loose, but after he was down, it's a gain of 20. They got plenty of time. For the Arizona Cardinals, this game is now at the pace that they like to play. This is how Jake would like to play the entire game. 
Plummer on the roll, dumps it off and out of bounds at the 25-yard line to Frank Sanders. Arizona with one timeout left, 34 seconds on the clock. Joe, let's go back to that interception that he threw. And the point that you made, we went right off the air, but you, you said he, the worst part about it, it was on first down when he did it. Right, as a, as a quarterback, you don't want to turn the ball over on first and ten. On that particular play, he could have thrown it away. He just tried to make too much. You'll see him be a lot more wise with the ball down here. Second and nine. Good protection for Plummer again. This one Metcalf couldn't handle inside the 20. This does not represent pressure for Chris Jackie. Pressure is with two seconds to go, and he kicks the game-winning field goal. That's three weeks in a row is what he's done, all in the final play of the game. This would just be a first-half field goal. But he's just been with the team, what, five weeks, right? Four weeks? Four just weeks. four weeks. And three game winners. Jameer Miller says, this guy scares the hell out of me. He makes all the hard ones and misses all the easy ones. <laughs> Plummer to centers. Trying to get to the sticks, and he's short by a yard. Run out of bounds by Charlie Williams. You know, this actually, because they have one timeout, this is really a mistake by centers. He doesn't know where the first down marker is. He's got to get the first down to give him a chance to get a touchdown. They'll take the three, I grant you. I, Paul, all he has to do is lower his shoulders to pick up that extra half yard or so. Jackie with a field goal that could make it 10-0. A 36-yard attempt. And he got it. Chris Jackie knocks it through, and Arizona has silenced the crowd again as they take a 10-0 lead. Chan Gailey, when he gets in at halftime, he's got to just say to his guys, listen, you've got to go out and start to play with a lot more intensity. What I've noticed in the first half is Arizona, particularly on defense, is playing with fire. They're playing with enthusiasm. They're playing tight. In, and for the Cowboys, they can't get anywhere near away from anybody. Look at the completion percentage. 47% today. And here's the career leader. Number one all-time in the postseason. He has really struggled today, but it's been because of sensational defense. Here are the three superstars and what they have done. Not superstar numbers. Aikman, 83 passing. Emmett, 51 rushing. That's pretty good for a half, but look at Irvin. Two catches for 16 yards. That won't get it done. Aeneas Williams has shut him down. Corey Chavis on the other corner has shut down whoever they send over there. A low bouncer, picked up by Tyrone Hughes. The other thing Michael Irvin told us the other day, and which is really true, and he's not passing the buck. I mean, the guy caught 74 passes this year, only one touchdown. That's part of this game. But he said everyone else has to step up. And what he really said was everyone on the offense must just do their job. And what's happening is the other people are not doing their job. We have to remember, this offense has struggled drastically over the last month of the season. Until last week. Well, yeah, against not a very good football team, the Washington Redskins. They, they struggle themselves. Let's see what Dallas does with 15 seconds left on the clock and all of its timeouts. Aikman steps up and throws incomplete. There was contact, and there is a flag. That penalty is going to be called on J.J. McCleskey, who got there early. And that's a good call. You're going to see McCleskey come up as he tries to swat the ball. Pass interference, 44 defense, first down. Watch McCleskey as he comes up to try and make a play on the ball. There's Michael in the slot. He turns and comes. And McCleskey just bumps him before the ball gets there. Aikman hit and sack back at the 33. Andre Wadsworth, the rookie from Florida State, came through and got him. The first sack just blew by Eric Williams. I mean, there was no contest. And, you know, the problem is, even on that last pass play that Aikman threw, Joe, he had to throw short. He had no one to throw to now, and he's dodging everybody. Whoops. That 
It's the end of the first half here at Texas Stadium. The score, Arizona 10, Dallas nothing. The Toyota Halftime Report is next after this message from the NFL and a word from our ABC station. 10 nothing. Mike Patrick, Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, Solomon Wilcox with you for our ABC NFC wildcard game. And the Cowboys will have to give up the football to start the second half. Going to kick to Metcalf, who waits at the one. Drives Metcalf five yards deep in the end zone. He'll take a knee, and Arizona will start from its own 20-yard line. First half numbers for you. The Cowboys actually had 40 plays to 27, and look at the rushing disparity, 73 to 11, but 165 passing yards for Arizona. Aikman threw for only 75 in the first half. That's because everybody's covered. Cowboy fans come to their feet, trying to encourage the defense. Plummer on first down to Gedney, the tight end. He'll pick up three. Let's go to Solomon Wilcox. Thanks, Mike. I talked to Vince Dover at halftime. He said that since his team is used to playing from behind in the second half, that he will not sit on the ball and protect this lead. He will continue to try to attack the Cowboys' defense. He expects them to try to blitz Jake Plummer. He says that will be a grand opportunity to hit some big plays here in the second half. Mike? And Solomon, that sounds like a great plan for Tobin. You really can't sit on it. Adrian Morrell with his first chance to run today. Morrell, midfield in a foot race. Adrian Morrell to the four. Adrian ran out of gas. <laughs> he really ran out of gas. Not used to running that far. <laughs> Dion <laughs> caught him from behind. What a good job by this offensive line. We talked about the Arizona offensive line, particularly in the middle. Aaron Graham, Lester Holmes, and Chris Dishman. You really Watch can't. the blocks that they create. Holmes on the backside. Now Morrell gets through the secondary. The tackle is missed. And that's Dion trying to run him down. And Kevin Mathis. Neither of them really can get to him. Ultimately, Dion falls on him after, he, as you said, Paul, ran out of gas. And that tells me Dion is not 100%. You know, First and goal, Arizona. They have to take a timeout for Adrian Morrell, the six-year veteran out of West Virginia, the longest run of the season. Well, you got a couple of missed tackles. That's the first thing that happens. But the hole in the middle was right there. Adrian Morrell, just watch him. He'll cut it back up the middle. Here, when he gets it here, there's a missed tackle up, up inside, and then Morrell is on his own. But when he gets down here, he really does. He runs out of gas. <laughs> he hit it right on the head. He's not used to running this far. Let's go to Solomon Wilcott. Solomon, what do you have? Yeah, Mike, at halftime, Deion Sanders came over to me and he says, man, we're playing like, it, like we have tomorrow. And he said to me, he says, you know what? In the playoffs, there is no tomorrow. He's really disappointed in the lack of intensity of this football team. And it shows right here on this opening drive here in the second half. Mike? It looks more and more like there may be a tomorrow for the Arizona Cardinals, who have not won a playoff game since 1947. Plummer on a roll, centers wide open, touchdown. Flag is down. Offside on the defense, that's a touchdown. Offside on the defense, the penalty is declined, touchdown. Such mobility at the quarterback position creates all kinds of problems down around the goal line. You see him jump offside, but Jake Plummer anticipating a blitz. He's got centers so wide open, he just sort of hangs it out to him, and he almost loses his balance. Larry centers with his third touchdown catch of the year. It is 16-0 Jackie to make it 17-0, and it is quiet as a church at Texas Stadium. 17-0, the Arizona Cardinals, stunning. The Dallas Cowboys will be back to Texas Stadium after this.
the underdog Arizona Cardinals with a 17-0 lead over the Dallas Cowboys. 13-44 to go in the third quarter. Jackie to kick to Tyrone Hughes. Hughes from the six. Has a seam up the middle. Flag down as he's tackled at the 33. Looked like a face mask. This is the 15-yard face mask. And they spun his whole body around. May have been Corey Chavis. I, I think it was J.J. McCluskey. Yeah, J.J. number 44. McCluskey was also there. Watch at the end. That's, no, it's, it is. It's, it is Chavis. Chavis. Chavis has got him. Grabbing and pulling on the face mask. 44, the kicking team. 15-yard penalty, first down. For the Cowboys now, this has turned into a one-dimensional game for them, and not necessarily something that they've excelled at. You almost take Emmett Smith's running ability, well, you do, running ability out of this game now. They'll take over at their own 48-yard line. Aikman short over the middle, dropped by the tight end, David LaFleur. ABC's NFC wildcard playoff game being brought to you by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you that fresh beer tastes better. Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airlines of the Super Bowl. And the all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most capable sports utility ever. Cowboys start this half just like they stopped, started the game, dropping a pass. Aikman, the victim of drops, 11 out of 24 for 83 yards. Emmett Smith trying to get outside, turns the corner and has a first down at the Arizona 41. There's another marker down, and Arizona indicating it's against Dallas. Holding. Holding. 89 offense. 10 yard penalty. Still second down. Back to back bad plays by LaFleur. Well, he's, he's Andre Wadsworth, number 90. He's trying to block him, and there's a reason why Emmett got to the outside. And we're going to show you the reason. Watch 89 LaFleur on Wadsworth 90. He's got him with his hands. Now, when Wadsworth tries to get away, you're out in space, and they see it. He's holding him by the jersey, pulls him down. Let me tell you, LaFleur being on the field is not good for them. He's got a bad right knee which means that he can't really get into pass routes. And when it comes to pass blocking, he's really trying to block on one leg. He's going to have to hold. Second and 20. Aikman in a lot of trouble and just throws it away. Let's go to Solomon Wilcox. Yeah, Mike, at halftime, I talked to Chan Gailey. He says that his offense is going to have to begin to get some production out of some of the other receivers other than Michael Irving. He was not pleased that they had so many drop balls in the first half. Feels like they need to sustain more big plays and put a drive together to really win this football game. Now they need the production out of some of their other receivers. Mike? Sol Solomon, it's not happening so far. They're third and 20 here, and Aikman just got splattered. Well, it, I'll tell you, it's got to scare you to death when you run a play action fake Joe and by the time you turn around you got three red shirts in your face third and long Aikman with time over the middle knocked away by Lassiter great coverage on Davis there hasn't been a receiver who's had more than a yard opening this entire game third down and 20 the Arizona Cardinals only rush four they drop seven back but they really don't give Troy Aikman any window to throw this in. If that ball is up and even close to being completed, it's going to wind up being intercepted. This is as good a secondary play as we have seen all season long. Going to punt to Metcalf. Can't get there, and it takes a Dallas bounce. And goes out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. They'll mark it at the 12. A punt of 50 with the bounce from Toby Goen. 17-0 Arizona in Dallas. It's 17-0 Arizona. What about Jake Plummer, Joe? Well, there's Jake Plummer's passing chart. We talked about him staying away from Dion. That's the side of the field that Dion occupies, and this is where he's had a lot of success. I don't think they're conscientiously staying away from Dion. He's just had an opportunity to go other places. 
the Cowboys need a turnover and needed badly. Mariel Bates in it running back to give Morell a breather. He gets it out near the 15-yard line. Jerry Jones has made an early appearance on the Dallas sideline, hoping to fire somebody up. Well, they better fire somebody up on the Dallas because since they missed the fourth and one, they've had 21 yards total in four drives. What a huge play that was. Great stand by the Arizona defense. They have made the difference today. Plummer. Gedney. Flag is down. Gedney gets to the 19-yard line, a couple of yards shy of a first down. Cardinals indicating again it's against Dallas. We have a penalty flag. Gedney tackled by Dexter Cogan. That will be an automatic first down for Arizona. You know, this was a great play by Gedney because what Gedney does is he's blocking. He's not even in the pattern. And when he sees Jake going out. Holding 94 defense. Five-yard penalty, first down. It's Michael Myers, but Gedney is blocking. And when he sees Jake Plummer sprinting to the outside, he just lets his man go and gets into the pattern. It's just a great play. Here it is right there. You see, he's being, he's being held right there. Now he gets out, opens himself up. Nice catch. Plummer wants a screen and throws too hard for centers. Dallas had that defense very, very well. I think the thing for Jake Plummer is Mark Trestman, as the coordinator, doesn't want to take away his ability to improvise, but yet he's got to just tell him to be smart. You know, I don't mind you gambling. I don't mind you being who you are. Just don't think you can make every play, and you don't have to. Tressman had been the offensive coordinator in San Francisco for a couple of years, said that was not an easy situation because out there everybody was the offensive coordinator. Plummer short set throws behind Moore up at the 29. Plummer just signed that $29.7 million contract extension, second only to Steve Young. He got an NFL record $15 million signing bonus. Bill Bidwell said it was a Christmas present to our fans. Wasn't bad for Jake Plummer either. Oh, yeah, Joe says, wasn't a nice Christmas present. He says, that's a lifetime present. Are you kidding me? Metcalf is in as a wide receiver on third and 10. Blitz. Plummer double clutch gets it to Metcalf, stopped a yard shy of the first down. <laughs> Nearly pulled it off. <laughs> Not only is this a great throw, but a great catch. I mean, Plum, Jake Plummer is going to throw it right away. Then he pulls it down, receives the blitz, and then watch the catch that Metcalf makes. The coverage, Baptist is there. The coverage, he's all over him. He still makes the catch. Boy, could they use a big play from Dion? He is back to take the punt. Scott Player hangs it high. Dion, late fair catch signal, makes it at the 31. A 40-yard punt, no chance of a return. Dion upset. So are the rest of his teammates. They're down 17 zip. Cardinals owner Bill Bidwell. He always has a scoop of ice cream after a victory. A comeback. It's two scoops. Last week when they got to playoffs, he had three. If they win this one, you better get to the frozen food <laughs> section of your supermarket before he does. Aikman needing to get something going. Tipped and incomplete. Simeon Rice got a hand on it. it you, know, you know what's really frustrating? And I know it's for him. It is for us, too, sitting there watching it. You watch it. You remember the Dallas Cowboy team going down the field, doing all those wonderful things? If you look, almost every pass that Aikman has thrown in the last two quarters, Joe, have been about a four-yard pattern. And here's one that's knocked down. And he's going to Moose Johnston. He's not even going to a wide receiver. He has hit one of his last seven for only two yards, only 83 on the game. Emmett. Shakes a tackle and drags someone to the 38. For about a month, this offense has struggled. Last week, notwithstanding, when they played very well for at least a half against the Redskins. In December, only 14 points a game. Today, they've been held scoreless. Only 264 total yards a game, less than 100 rushing. They're only at 73 today. Third down conversions in the one out of four range. And the offensive touchdowns, four in December. 
They had hoped they had broken out of it a week ago. Emmett was holding his hand. He had a sprain hand diagnosed in the first half. Aikman under pressure, throws as he goes down, almost intercepted. Tom Knight got his hands on it, couldn't hold it, and Aikman took another big shot. Boy, they are just giving the Dallas Cowboys offense a lesson in defense. I mean, they are playing every single person tight. Well, and if they're not playing one guy tight, they're doubling up. Now that defensive line, which is built for speed with Simeon Rice and Andre Wadsworth, can put pressure on him. There's Jeffries. He can't get away from Knight. Knight just hangs in his back pocket. He's playing with a broken wrist or probably would have been able to pick that off. They need some speed on the outside to take the double teams away from Irvin. And right now they don't have it. Going to punt to Metcalf, a high floater. Metcalf fair catch at the 19. There's a marker down back at the line of scrimmage, a 42-yard punt. Going to be an ineligible man downfield. He left too quickly. Joe Avizano. Special teams haven't come up with any big plays today. Ineligible member of the kicking team, number 54 downfield. The penalty is declined. First down. That was Darren Hambrick. Arizona will take it where it is at its own 20-yard line, up 17-0. Cardinals tossing a shutout at the Cowboys, 17-0 with 10.04 to go. We told you about Jake Plummer's new contract. He has given them stability at quarterback, the first to lead the team in starts for two straight years in over a decade when Neil Lomax did it. He should be there a long time. Morrell back in a tailback. Tripped up, gains maybe a yard. Here's what Aeneas Williams said about Jake Plummer and what he has meant to this ball club. One of the best things that's happened to our organization is bringing in Jake because Jake, I observed him, I had the pleasure of looking at him in college. And just to see this guy, uh, that, that senior year, to go out and, and win the games in the fashion in which he won them, I think has prepared him for the spot that he's in right now. Aeneas Williams admitted he cried after the game last week. He had suffered so much as a member of the Arizona Cardinals to make the playoffs was just overwhelming for him. Plummer dumps it to Morrell, an excellent receiver. He gets it up to the 24-yard line. This team has been through so many people at that quarterback spot. 16. 16 <laughs> since they moved to the desert. 15. I think Jake being the 16. Well, if Aeneas cried after last week's game, if they win this ball game, he's going to ball like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll probably have company. That's right. Third and five. The crowd trying to help the Dallas defense. Plummer trying to make something happen. Throws on the run. Incomplete. Moore got a hand on it. Couldn't hold it. Would have been a first down. That's the one thing that you cannot defense. Dave Campo talked to us about it over the weekend. He said, we can put people on people. But we, we cannot account for Jake Plummer's ability to move, move around. Rob Moore lets another one get away from him, or they do have the first down. That was a catchable ball and a heck of a throw by Plummer on the run. Dion waits at the 32. Player, another short kick. Dion takes it on the bounce, saves maybe a couple of yards. The 38, a 36-yard punt, one-yard return. Player has kept the ball in bounds most of the time, but he's kept it away from Deion Sanders. The Cowboys are down 17-0, and statistically, at least, the failures with the big three. They haven't come through. Well, Aeneas Williams is doing his job. Michael Irvin has caught two balls this entire ball game for 14 yards, Joe. He, Aeneas Williams takes Michael Irvin out of the game. The score is basically taking Emmett Smith out of the game because they're not going to be able to run the football. But we talked about that opposite receiver from Michael. Ernie yeah. Mills got hurt, and he had four touchdowns coming in as he moved along in this season and did very well. So they are missing his presence as well. Aikman trying to get something started. Fits this one in there. It's a gain of nine yards to Eric Bjornsson. 
but nothing to stretch the defense. And Irvin is the only guy with the speed out there right now who can do it. And Aeneas Williams has literally shut him down. Trying to get the first down with Emmett and Moore. Emmett to the Arizona 39-yard line. See, that's one of the problems you have. You got second down and short. You know they're going to blitz. And once you get Emmett, Emmett past the line of scrimmage or to that hole, there's no one there. He's got 10 or 12 yards. Emmett Smith not being taken out of the game by the score yet, but Larry Allen does a nice job. You see him move up inside. Emmett does a terrific job of seeing the outside break and picking up the necessary yards. He has 15 carries for 71 yards pace for 100. Aikman throws short. Flag is down. And they're going to call interference as Bjornsson made the catch with Pat Tillman on his back. Let's see who they call it against. Holding on Pat Tillman. But again, you're talking about Joe, we saw this right from the beginning of the game. The coverage. These guys are glued. And Pat Tillman basically Now, the flag would give them a first down. The play went for about nine, eight and a half yards. Pat Tillman was the starting free safety. Lassiter has replaced him, but because the Cowboys now have to throw the ball a bit more, he's in there. Okay. Holding 40 defense. Five-yard penalty, first down. So they take the penalty because it's an automatic first down. And they lose four yards on the play. <laughs> but you gotta, you got to stay in the first down situation. 7-10 to go third quarter. It has been all Arizona. Dallas was stopped on a fourth and goal situation. That was their best chance to score. Cunningham also missed a 36-yard field goal. the snap and got it back a break for Dallas is Aikman able to fall on it at the 35 oh he takes a shot in the head by Jameer Miller and when he goes for the ball Jameer Miller comes to and he hits him right in the head here here comes the ball out Aikman never gets it presence of mind to get back up on the ball watch his head boom Jameer Miller 95 there Jameer Miller is a huge linebacker, 266. Cardinals come with a blitz. Beautiful timing on it. Jameer Miller timed the snap count perfectly. There's no way to block it. We just talked about him, you know, and how big he is and how quick he is. And he came in the meeting yesterday just smiling all over the place. But you want to talk about perfect timing on the blitz. You don't time it any better than this. Watch. Up inside, nobody to block him. Aikman has no chance. And it was interesting talking to him also, Paul. He talked about they studied the New Orleans film an awful lot, and nobody put that kind of pressure on this Dallas offense that the way the New Orleans Saints did earlier this year. Williams checks in. Third and 17. Aikman has to step up. Still can't find anybody. They got him. It's fumbled, but Dallas gets it back. You know what the problem with this? Joe, when he steps up, nobody's moving. He has no place to throw the ball, and Boyd Bjornsson's just standing there. Nobody goes and makes a move to him. Third down and 17 is not the situation you want to be in, but, Paul, you're right. He has nowhere to go with the football. Aeneas Williams on Michael Irvin. Just sort of trying to find an open area. How are you going to get down the field 17 yards? There's Billy Davis. He's not anywhere near 17 yards. What a terrific job Dave McGinnis has done as the coordinator of this Arizona defense. And they will punt it away on fourth and a mile. Metcalf signals fair catch. Makes it just inside the 15-yard line. A punt of only 29. Tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, ABC, home of the Bowl Championship Series, presents the FedEx Orange Bowl. Florida against Big East champion Syracuse, led by quarterback Donovan McNabb. The Gators and the Orange Men return to the Orange Bowl.
for the first time in over 30 years. And Donovan McNabb, one of the great athletes anywhere in college football. Could be, could be the second pick in the draft of quarterbacks. I really think he has everything it takes to be able to play in this level. He's a big-time player. Plummer on a little half roll. Throws. Incomplete. Nice defense by Woodson as he went after Johnny McWilliams, the tight end, and hit him just as the ball got there. I like what they're doing. I mean, they're, they're not wasting any time. They're still throwing the football. They're still in their game plan. Mark Tressman, the coordinator, believes that this offense must stay at their pace and not have anything dictated by the Cowboys in its work for him so far. You talk about guys who could be and should be considered as head coaching candidates. He's certainly one of them. Second and 10 with 4.58 to go in the third quarter. Time has to be a concern now for the Dallas Cowboys. Morrell. Room up the middle across the 20. How many games we do this year? Um, a lot. 22, 23. You know how many guys that you put up for head coaching jobs? 22, <laughs> 23. A lot of jobs. <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah, there are going to be a few openings, aren't there? Yeah, but I'll tell you, there was a big opening on this hole. Lester Holmes, number 71, on Leon Lett. They want to run inside. Look at the job he does. He blocks not only Lett, then he moves off inside, winds up blocking Randall Godfrey. Third and four for Arizona. Plummer with a quick throw. McWilliams has it, and that should be a first down just across the 25-yard line. All right, my turn. First down. Oh, come on. <laughs> you take the easy my one. Turn. Oh. First down. What a great throw and catch. Got to be Johnny frustrating. McWilliams for Jerry Jones down on the sideline early and watching his defense not being able to stop them and time ticking away here in the third quarter under four minutes to go. Normally, time would not be a concern, but you're down three scores and Arizona has the ball. Morrell again. They string it out and get him at the line of scrimmage. Nice job by Dexter Coakley. What comes to mind now at this point of the game, when we were talking to Vince Tobin last night, he said, we have, you know, we've had a lot of comeback victories and we've won a lot of games at the end. But we have been in position in a lot of those games to be able to put teams away, and we just haven't been able to do it. This is not a normal situation for this Arizona Cardinal team. They haven't been real good at putting people away. So this really is uncharted territory with a 17-0 lead. against Dallas and in the playoffs. Talk about uncharted territory. McWilliams, Woodson may have gotten there early. No flag. Oh, boy. <laughs> early? Oh, boy. That, those flags must be tucked real deep in pockets. It sure looked like pass interference. I got to be honest with you. Watch out to the left part of your screen. Little play action. McWilliams is there. Woodson, he's... I, McWilliams was in between Woodson and the ball, and it sure looked like he might have pushed him before the ball got there. Metcalf is in as an additional wide receiver on third and ten. Plummer throws complete, should have another first down. What a catch by Sanders, and what a throw by Plummer, because Leon Lett was getting ready to destroy him. I'll tell you, there, there's, there's really some, some problems on this football team for Dallas. Their defense. Artie Smith comes into the game late. Sanders moving across the middle. He has made so many big plays for this offense in winning situations, first down situations, all year long. 89 catches this year. Plummer now 18 of 31 for 201 yards. A new set of downs. Morell in the draw. Adrian Morell picks up about eight. The AFC NFC Pro Bowl live on ABC Sports Sunday, February 7th at 6 p.m. Eastern. You'll see the best in the final game of the season from Honolulu and the Packers' Reggie White playing in his final Pro Bowl game after a stellar career. Plummer calling the play at the line of scrimmage. Gedney is in at tight end. And Plummer wants to throw it. He hits Gedney midfield. 
Dallas 44-yard line. Mathis made the tackle. Another first down Arizona. Let me tell you about an offense staying within their own pace. There was 16 seconds left on the on the clock when they snapped that ball. Arizona is not just slowing things down. Here they are again, right at the line of scrimmage. So I'm telling you, they're having trouble getting people on the field on defense. They're catching Dallas moving and not being in position, Paul. Well, Leon Lett walked off the field, so Artie Smith, obviously he's substituting for Lett and Chad Henning. So he was late getting on the field for the second time. But I'll tell you, it's kind of easy, I think, staying within your offense, doing the things that you want to do when your defense is playing as well as they're playing. We have not given the offensive line of Arizona enough credit today. These guys, we saw them in the film, they look terrible. Today, they look great. They couldn't have picked a better time to play well. Plummer short set, floats it. More with the catch if he's able to stay in bounds. It's a huge play. He couldn't stay in at all. Yeah, this is all, this is all Jake Plummer. Well, what Jake does is the corner gambles. Jake wants to rear up and throw it right away. The corner breaks on it, and all of a sudden, watch this. He's on the ground. You see that right left foot just land out of bounds. Nice call by the official. I mean, Kevin Mathis is just left sprawling trying to guess on the post. And Rob Moore really has to have a better feel of where he is on the field. Third and eight. Plummer to centers, can't hold it. He was covered by Omar Stoutmeyer, but again, Plummer got the ball there. What they did in that drive is eat up a lot of clock. Sanders will go back to the 10 this time, but player with every opportunity to kick it out of bounds or kick it very high or kick it in the end zone. Chooses very high. Dion, a late fair catch signal and makes it at the 10 yard line. The Super Bowl is online at SuperBowl.com. You can chat with fans and build your own Super Bowl homepage. And all of you people who are computer literate can find all sorts of goodies to do with that thing. You know, Mike, I said that, that they ate up some clock. They ate up five minutes. That's the longest drive they had the longest time in this entire ball game. Really, guys were dropping balls, and they still have the ball. Yep. Emmett Smith is in a tailback. Jerry Jones looking up at the clock. 28 seconds to go, third quarter. Aikman with time. Jeffers out at the 25-yard line. When Aikman is throwing the ball on time and in rhythm, he's almost impossible to stop. Well, he came out and he threw the ball on time and in rhythm at the beginning of the game, but they kept dropping balls. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. 17-0 Arizona. We'll be back after this from our ABC station. Aikman to throw. Rifles this one, and Aeneas Williams took it away. The officials have made no signal yet. He took it away from Urban. And now they signal first down Arizona. You know, you know what it is, Williams told us yesterday. He walked in. The field. The pass was intercepted. First down Arizona. You see Aeneas Williams, he's on Michael Irving. And we walked in the meeting yesterday. I said, are you going to be covering him man to man? He said, I'm going to tell you something. If he goes to the bathroom, I'm going with him. Now, take a look at this play. You talk about going wherever he goes. Aeneas Williams, watch this play. That's just terrific. Now, that was an incomplete. That was not complete. That ball actually hits the ground, but Aeneas does. Watch this. This ball comes out. That ball is not an interception. Yeah, it is. It counts as his second of the game. Plummer on the run throws incomplete. Let's take another look and see if we can see what you're talking about, Joe. I missed it. Hawkeye. Watch this. 
He does a nice job of selling it. Watch when he makes the break on the ball. Watch where it winds up. He's down. There's the ball right oh, there on the right. ground. His helmet's laying on it. You are absolutely right. Now, there's a situation where the Cowboys, who only had three possessions in the third quarter, would have needed it to keep the ball. Look at what Aeneas Williams has done against Michael Irvin. They've thrown at him seven times. He's picked two. Mario Bates is in to run. Bates straight ahead to the Dallas 31-yard line. And Irvin's only caught two. Yeah, for what, 16 yards? It was also interesting talking to Lomas Brown yesterday. He said, because of the speed of the Dallas Cowboys on defense, we want to run the ball right up the middle. And that's exactly what they've done. The Adrian Morrell's big run was right up the middle. I think what Lomas is saying in the huddle. Rushing the Cardinals with 97 in the second half. 74 of that coming on Morrell's joint. Bates, again, straight up the middle. Well, we just saw Lomas Brown in the huddle, and he was talking to Jake, and he looked at him, and, and I really think what he was saying to him, Joe, is, all right, we're in the fourth quarter. Slow down. Take that clock down to about five seconds or four before you snap the ball. Well, Lomas Brown was interesting also. He said, hey, look, I asked him about what's it like to block for Jake Plummer because he moves around so much. He says, you got to remember something. I blocked for Barry Sanders in Detroit for That's a right. long time. I know how to block for a guy who doesn't wind up where he starts all the time. Chris Jackie comes onto the field. His first field goal officially 37. This would be 46. It doesn't look like Chris Jackie is going to be able to make that last second field goal for the Arizona Cardinals. But he said, I'd just like to see these guys score some touchdowns. So I don't have to. Plenty of distance and straight down the middle. The Arizona Cardinals laying it to the Dallas Cowboys. 12.55 to go in the playoff game. It's 20 to nothing. Arizona. Back to Irving after this. Tuesday. This is one of the most lopsided divisional rivalries in the 90s. The Cowboys 16 to 2 over the Cardinals. Tough to call it a rivalry when you don't win, but two out of 18. The last time Arizona won here, 1989. Jimmy Johnson's first year when the Cowboys were 1 and 15. But they've got a big leg up on it this time. They'll start from the 24-yard line. Fred Brock makes the tackle on Tyrone Hughes. Dallas's biggest comeback ever in the playoffs. 18 points. They were down to the 49ers, 21 to 3. That was in 1972. They need 20 to tie in this one. And so far this second half, now we're 12:46 to go. They've gained a total, a total, 35 yards against this defense in the we, second half. We have not seen Dion on offense. He's been back for some punts, but hasn't had a chance to return one. Aikman goes short to Jeffers. And Arizona now dropping back in a zone. They're going to give Aikman all the short stuff he wants. What Arizona has done is they have basically taken the Dallas Cowboys completely out of their offense. You can't totally count them out because one big turnover, they could be back in it. But this is not the way that Troy Aikman wants to be able to operate this offense. Aikman throws to the sideline. Corey Chavis was all over Billy Davis and got his hands on it again. You know what? Aikman said something very interesting about Aeneas Williams. We're talking about him lined up. And he said, what do you think of him in the corner? Is a corner? He said, well, we know that he's going to be on Michael Irvin. He said, but he never lines up the same way twice. Mm -hmm. We don't know what he's in. We don't know whether he's playing off, whether he's playing zone, whether he's playing man. He gives you a different look on every single play. Third and four. It is critical for Dallas on every possession to get something on the board. Draw to Evan Smith. Has to get to the yard marker, and they knock him out of bounds. Nice defense by Bennett, who was the last line of defense, and Jameer Miller. They wouldn't let him get to the sticks. Even this far backed up, Chan Gailey, I think, has got to go for it. Even though it's fourth down, you know, you're at a point right now where you've got to get a first down. 
because how many times can you expect to get the ball? Well, like I said, in the third quarter, they had three offensive possessions. If you were to score touchdowns on all of them, they'd have a lead, but they haven't been able to generate any offense. The Cowboys in desperate straits, fourth and a little over a yard. And Aikman's going to have to use a timeout. The play clock running down and the wheels are coming off in Big D. 20 nothing Cardinals. Fourth quarter, Cardinals by 20. There's defensive coordinator Dave McGinnis. What a job, huh, Joe? He has done a terrific job. And basically, he told me last night, he said, the number one thing I want to do is I want to stop the run. He said, but I'm going to have to do it with my four guys up front. I don't want to leave my corners out there on an island and exposed. And that's the game. He has, he has put together the perfect game plan so far in this game for his team. Fourth in the yard for Dallas. A must-make situation. Here comes the blitz. Aikman to throw. And they got it. Jameer Miller with his second huge play. By not being able to run the football in crucial third down situations, it has been a problem for the Cowboys all year. When they lost Chris Warren, they lost somebody who could pound it up inside. Jameer Miller, I'm telling you, they sent more people than they had to block and to run a play action down here. I mean, it's almost insane. Nate Newton cannot get out, number 61, to get Jameer Miller. And he just nails Nate Aikman. Aikman walked off very slowly. Here it comes here. Nate Newton, 61, trying to get outside. Not on that speed. You're, you can't make it. Watch this. 61 on 95. No way. Mario Bates is in at the running back. Bates plunges forward inside the 20. And right now, Arizona trying to deal the death blow to the Dallas Cowboys. In the two regular season games, Troy Aikman threw the ball 50 times. He was not sacked. Today, four times in addition, hurried 16 times and hit 12. From the beginning of this football game, the Dallas Cowboys on either side of the ball did not play with a sense of urgency or passion. Arizona came with all that and more. Second and five. Bates. Dallas strings it out. He cuts it back. Bates close to the 15. They need to reach the 13 for a first down. You know what? I go back to talking to Aikman two days ago when he was sitting there. You talk about it. This young team, Joe, was not experienced coming into the playoffs. And he said to you, wait a minute. Back in 1990? 92. 92. We were the youngest team in football, and we swept everything and won the Super Bowl. Now, you know, he knew. I mean, he really knew that this team was a pretty good football team and, coming in here. And you make the point in the open. I mean, the last three weeks, this is nothing new for them. Actually, what is new is this much of a lead. <laughs> but they've been under a ton of pressure for the last month. Well, we said this was uncharted territory. This is where no Cardinal has gone before, up 20 to nothing in the playoffs. Third and three with 10-22 to go in the game. Arizona cruising. Emmett Smith, the only one of the Cowboys' big three who has put up playoff-like numbers today. Irvin has been shut down by Aeneas Williams and Troy Aikman with no one other than Irvin to go to has had a miserable afternoon. Nate Newton, one of the playoff veterans, watching... Their reemergence come to an end at the hands of the Arizona Cardinals, a team they are used to pounding on. This one's picked off by Woodson. Maybe the break they needed. Arizona could have put it away with a touchdown. Instead, the ball is tipped away from Gedney, and it's a pick. They could have put it away with a field goal also, Michael, because then it would have required four scores. The worst possible thing that could have happened to the Arizona Cardinals just in. Let's see if the Cowboys can take advantage of the break. Woodson with the pick off of Plummer. The Cowboys will take over at their own 28. Jake Plummer coming out trying to pick up a simple first down. Again, you got to understand it's third and three. If he's not completely wide open, you don't make the throw. The throw is to Gedney. 
He winds up having the ball batted up in the air by Hambrick, and Woodson winds up with the pick. You had a dejected Dallas Cowboy bench. All of a sudden, you put them on a respirator for at least a little while again. But they still face the same problem. Now what do you do once you have the football? They have not been able to move it except for Emmett Smith running. And you can't run now. We talked about it before. There's, there's a lot of different playoff experience that you have. Arizona has not been in a situation where they've been able to protect the lead very well. Here it is again. They put the onus right on their defense. And the defense has been equal to any challenge so far today, especially in the secondary. They have been sensational for Vince Tobin. And here are the numbers. Emmett with 74 yards. Aikman has thrown only for 114 with two picks. And Irvin with two early catches, only 16 yards receiving. Aeneas Williams, two picks. He is a class act, and Jameer Miller, who said after the birth of his daughter, his life turned around. He used to think everything was a joke. He didn't work hard. Then he realized he had more than just himself to worry about. It has changed his life and his career. Four-man rush as they have all day. Aikman floats it for Jeffers too far. One of the few times actually had somebody behind the defender. The, the tackles, both Larry Allen and Eric Williams, are now being placed in a situation that is not as comfortable for them. They both have to block two little quick ends. You got Simeon Rice at 260, Andre Wadsworth at 280. Both guys lined up, Paul, you talk about it. They lined up like they're in, in the blocks for a track beat. Well, Simeon Rice is the funniest thing. He, he, he spends about... Most of this game about, about a foot and a half off the ground. When he lines up, he gets down. He's on the end of the line. They bring a rare blitz. Dallas picks it up. Aikman throws underneath, and Irvin got a hand on it. Couldn't hold it. And Mias Williams was right there in the crowd, starting to get on Irvin and the Cowboys a little bit. Simeon Rice, I mean, it really is amazing. It, this goes on all, all day long, folks. I'm telling you, he's down in that position. That's how close the ground. He stays down there. Now he comes up. Larry Allen's got him, blocking him to the inside. Does a great job on him. Third and 10. Rice had 10 sacks during the regular season. 10.04 to go in the game. Aikman against the blitz, steps up, running for his life. Drops it off, Irvin has the first down at the 39-yard line. The tackle made by Kwame Lasseter. Simeon Rice, this time number 97, beats Larry Allen to the inside. Now, the Dallas Cowboys are trying to get into a hurry-up offense. Watch this. He goes outside Simeon, number 97, and then back inside. Larry Allen can't get there. Aikman goes back to work and throws a strike to Davis. Another 10-yard gain to midfield. You no, know, this is really a good call by the official, Joe, because Billy Davis catches the ball in bounds. He's knocked out of bounds, but what they, they talk about is his forward progress. His forward progress is in bounds, so the clock moves. Aikman again over the middle. Again, complete to Patrick Jeffers. You never want to count out Troy Aikman and the Dallas Cowboys. They they have the ability to make big plays. They just hadn't been able to do it through three and almost like three and a half quarters. They haven't been shut out in the playoffs since 1985 when the Rams did it 20 to nothing. In the flat to Emmett. 30, 25. Check at 1986 instead of 85 on that shutout. The one thing that Troy Aikman is doing in this in the last couple of plays, now he's looking in the middle of the field. He threw one in the middle of the field, and this time he just has to throw it to Emmett on the outside. Got a timeout with 839. The Cardinals call timeout. And we'll be back to Texas Stadium right after this. 20-0 Arizona. 20-0 Cardinals trying to keep the Dallas Cowboys out of the end zone. They have a first and 10 at their at the Cardinal 25-yard line. 
Dallas needs three touchdowns to take the lead. Aikman again over the middle. Gain of only four that time as Irvin makes the catch. Aikman to the sideline. Chavis with another play on Billy Davis. Has he been sensational? You know what, what you're seeing is Chavis has had such a great game, but he's looking in the backfield. He's looking right at Aikman. He's not looking at Billy Davis. He's on the top of your screen. Look at him looking back into the backfield. He sees the ball coming out. He breaks on it and makes the play. He's played that way. Absolutely right, Paul. That same way all, all way. He's one of the true historians in this game. He has a huge film library, appreciates the tradition and the people that have played this game before. Aikman throws, caught by Davis. Chavis wants it called incomplete, and now they will. Well, that's a, that's a good job of officiating as a crew. The two officials, the side judge and the line judge didn't see it. The back judge from the middle had the perfect view of it. And a Davis does not argue the call. And again, Billy Davis cannot come up with a big play to keep the offense alive. Watch the throw. He turns in. Ball gets through, it's on the ground. You see him try and pull it back into him. He's got to make that catch. Fourth down. And here comes the blitz. And this one goes right by Jeffers, bangs into Lassiter, and Knight is incomplete. And Arizona is going to take over with 8.06 to go in the game. That's the second time they have stopped Dallas deep in their own territory. And that may be the death knell for the Cowboys today. <laughs> In this. Well, I would tell you something. Jeffers is coming across the middle, but two guys are there to hit him. He gets there. Tom Knight and Lassiter are there. Boom, boom. How frustrating has that got to be for Troy Aikman? He I mean, put the ball on the money so many times. Timeout only 8.06 to go in the first round of the playoffs. A quick departing crowd here at Texas Stadium. They have seen enough with the Cardinals on top of their Cowboys. 20 to nothing. They did not get the expected lift from the return of Deion Sanders. Bates. Maybe a yard and Leon Lett made the tackle. Tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, ABC, the home of the Bowl Championship Series, presents the FedEx Orange Bowl. Florida battles Big East champion Syracuse, led by versatile quarterback Donovan McNabb. The Gators and the Orange Men back to the Orange Bowl for the first time in over 30 years. The Cowboys have taken a timeout. They have only one left. Today, Aikman and really raised that completion percentage in this last drive, hitting 44.1%. He is the NFL's all-time leader in postseason completion percentage, hitting two-thirds of his passes. But to be honest about it, he had receivers that could catch a lot better than this group outside of Michael. There were a whole bunch that dropped tonight. I mean, I mean, just out and out dropped the football. I'll tell you, if I had a game ball to give out, I'd give it to Dave McGinnis. I'd, I'd paint it up pretty, I'd paint it up sweet, and I'd say, you put a terrific plan together, and I'd give everybody else on that defense something, too, because the line put just enough pressure on, and the secondary covered the receivers like blankets. Bates, straight up the middle to the 27, maybe the 28-yard line. And you don't think this is going to be a boost for the Cardinals' chances to get a new stadium? There is a vote in May in Mesa. A bond issue, and this has really got to help their chances getting in the playoffs and now winning their first playoff game since 1947. ABC's NFC wildcard playoff game is being brought to you by Bud Light. The great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. Microsoft, where do you want to go today? Circuit City, answers in every department, low prices all over the store. And Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste.
Joe, Joe Green. Green. Yes, sir. He won a few in the postseason, didn't he, Joe? He did. And, you know, that was one of the things that this team has talked about. Their coaches have got a lot more playoff experience than most That's of the right. guys have. There's a guy that's available for head coaching material. Sure. <laughs> Bates. Trying to get the first down very, very close. They're going to mark it right at the 30-yard line. Fred Strickland made the tackle. The Cowboys have used their timeouts to try to conserve time, and now they'll measure for the first down. All right, where's the ball? Let me see. No, no, no. Way. no you, i got to see the ball. No, you can't. You have to make your call now. Make your call now. He didn't make it. Okay. We had mentioned the Cardinals' plans for a new stadium, something that they have tried to get ever since they moved to the Valley. It would be a multi-purpose facility, which would also serve as a convention center that would put Phoenix in the top 10 cities in the United States in that department. He didn't but, make it, I'm telling you. Oops. Welcome to my world. <laughs> Oh, 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 eagle eye. Well, they didn't let me see the ball. I had to see the ball. You can't do that. There's a guy that saw the ball and saw it up, Jerry Jones. He's not leaving two, is he? I think the biggest thing for Jerry Jones has been the intensity with which his team played. I mean, it, it just, there was no fire in this Cowboy football team. Solomon alluded to it when he talked to Dion at halftime. It was disappointing to him, and it's got to be disappointing to Jerry. Now all the Cardinals need to do is work on the clock. Dallas has no timeouts left. Bates gets a couple. I know Arizona offensively ran the game plan that they wanted to. Jake scrambled around and made some plays. They ran the ball up the middle. They did exactly the things that they wanted to do coming into this game. But defensively, their defense hasn't played this soundly. I don't think all year. We saw them early in the season against, against Philadelphia, Philadelphia. And I want to tell you something. I thought they'd wind up with the same record at Philadelphia at that time. Well, remember that Philadelphia game at the end of three quarters, it was 0-0. Zero, zero, so the defense did a good job then. Second and seven, Bates again. you got to remember, though, Paul, they were playing the Philadelphia Eagles, who haven't really lit it up from a scoring standpoint. But consider the history of this. The Cardinals were one of the NFL original franchises founded in 1920. Since 1920, now a period of 79 years, they had won how many playoff games? One. Yeah, we kept them out. One. one. We kept them out, I think, in 84, the Redskins. Everybody kept them out. That's true. <laughs> Every year. And another guy that I think deserves an awful lot of credit is Vince Tobin. Doesn't he? Bob Ferguson, another one in the front office guys. Larry Wilson. These guys have really made a commitment over the last three years to raise the level of talent on that team. Setters on the draw. It's just across the 30-yard line. I bet you old Dan Deerdorf down in Miami has got to be as proud as he could possibly be. And this is a whole football team. Speaking of proud, Bill Bidwell has waited a long time to see this. Harry Truman was the president of the United States the last time his family-owned ball club won a playoff game. Hamburger was about 10 cents a pound. <laughs> and they were still flying DC-3s. Cardinals to punt it away, letting the play clock wind down. Dion comes up on it, doesn't have a chance. Bates downfield to down it. The last Cardinal playoff win, you go back 51 years in two cities, 1947 to Comiskey Park to the Chicago Cardinals behind the rushing of Elmer Angsman and Charlie Trippy. They defeated the Philadelphia Eagles 28-21, their only NFL championship and their last playoff win. Paul McGuire was still a child at that point. And yeah, do you want to know something? There's, there's a penalty against the Cardinals on that punt. Do you, know, you notice something in that film other than black and white? Do you notice something? You were standing on the sidelines. Yeah, <laughs> but no face masks. No face mask, pal. Why do you think, I mean, did they, did they, they, why do you think my face looks like that? I, hate, I didn't want to go there, <laughs> but this that you brought it up. My face is worn out four bottoms. There's my old face mask. It's yeah. being passed around the league. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, you know, quarterbacks aren't allowed to wear them anymore. It was a holding call against the Cardinals. 
Well, anyone with a brain would not, right? That's you wouldn't wear it now, would you? Sure I would. Absolutely. Oh, oh he made a mistake. Dion with a chance. Look out. Dion just caught it to 25. Is he something else? A 41-yard return after a punt of 45. Give him a chance, he'll kill you. I just told you, he made a mistake. Don't, you don't, I don't care how far you are ahead. Don't get stupid and kick this guy the ball. I mean, this doesn't make any sense. You don't kick it down the middle, as you said. But he just waits for people to commit, and he knows he's faster than everybody on, a, on nine and a half toes. <laughs> Watch him pause. He just waits, 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 then has tremendous acceleration. Hey, look at the kicker. Yeah, you're going to get him. This is his first game since November 15th when he sustained a severe turf toe on his left foot. Aikman with another chance. For the end zone, Davis was there, but Chavis caught up. Boy, did you see Chavis close? Of course, the ball was, was hung up in the air. Davis has done it, but Chavis came in. I mean, this guy has played a tremendous football game. He is a rookie, folks, and we mentioned at the beginning. Let you hear it again. Number 25 is a rookie. Watch him close on this ball. He reads the ball in the air. Now it's mine. He has made play after play in this game, as has his counterpart at the other corner, Aeneas Williams. Aikman to Bjornsson. Knight makes the tackle at the 22-yard line, inbounds. The crowd wanted the clock to stop. Do you know, Joe, that almost on every catch when a guy caught a ball, they're punishing him? Oh, they're yeah. making him pay. The Cardinals are making the Cowboys pay for every catch they make. Aikman over the middle. Jeffers to the six. Brought down by the strong safety, Tommy Bennett. It's a gain of 17. Stranger things have happened. I Not know. much, well, but we, stranger. We did the Minnesota Giant game last year. We never, we never thought the Minnesota Vikings could come back at that one. Aikman with the fade to the corner. Williams, the closest one to it. Urban stopped. Aeneas Williams, as Paul mentioned, has changed up his coverage all day on Michael Irvin. It creates a problem for Troy Aikman on this pass. Now he decides to jam him. <laughs> Troy thinks Michael's going to run the fade, and he doesn't. He scrambles around. Aeneas has just been on top of him. That was Second and goal from the six. looking for Davis. Touchdown, Billy Davis. He was completely covered by Knight and Chavis. Then they relaxed, and he broke to the middle of the end zone. Well, Bruce Johnson had a little bit to do with that. At 3.33 in the fourth quarter, the Dallas Cowboys finally get on the board. Cunningham will try the point after. They still need two touchdowns. 3.33 to go, and they have no timeouts. <laughs> 20 to 7. The shutout is gone, but Arizona still leads by 13. Protection was very good on that particular pass play, but this time Billy Davis just keeps on working. There he is against Corey Chavis. Corey's, now Billy stops. They slide over. He just keeps working. Does a nice job of slide into the opening and really cradled that one. It, it, it almost looked like he thought that Knight would be sitting there in the middle doing the job. Yes, but it did. Johnston came out in the pattern, and that confused both guys. Now you'll see the hands team of the Arizona Cardinals. The Cowboys will attempt an onside kick, and it's going to be extremely critical if Arizona wants to protect this game that they do get possession of the ball. This it, is a daunting situation for the Cowboys. Everything has to go so right. They need this onside kick, a touchdown, another onside kick, and another touchdown. Mike, we, 
it's all it's the same thing you said a year ago when exactly. we said the giant it, and it, it happened exactly Pat Tillman comes out there's Bates let me just say this the Arizona Cardinals have made this a lot tougher situation on their owner with his nerves than they had to well, they haven't gotten the name Cardiac Cardinals for nothing. Now they're doing it the other way, trying to protect the league. You know, I can never understand why a guy doesn't, you know, like like Woodson, Darren Woodson, stand by the kicker, they'll kick it the other way. Look, at they have to move everybody. They're going to do that. They're going to move everybody over. And they got a shot at it. Loose ball. Tillman fought for it. It looks like the Cowboys got it back. Yeah, but they're not going to get it, and I'll tell you why. There's flags in the play. The Cowboys touched the ball before it went 10 yards, and you can't do that. Gullen was waiting. He was praying that it would go across that yard stripe, and he could have recovered it. Plus, I think they might have been offsides. I know one thing, that you can't touch it. Yeah, they're offsides. Good call, Joseph. Joe Avizano on the right, Chan Gailey. What they're thinking about right now is, okay, do we do it again? Offside on the kicking team, the five-yard penalty, free kick. Well, they will do it again. The thing is, will they do it the same way? That's the big question. I think that's what Joe Avizano was standing there with Chan Gailey with. Al, Al Everest, Everest, the special teams coach for the Cardinals. I thought the Cardinals reacted very well uh, when the Cowboys made their adjustment. Watch the offside. Billy Davis is right in the middle by about two yards. Billy's not had himself a very good day. All right, what I was going to say is, you know, you see how you, you line up to kick the ball, Cunningham this way, coming towards us to boot. Well, why couldn't Darren just, there's only one guy over there, and that's Frank Sanders, kick the ball over there. But there's only one guy. He could, except the problem is he's a right-footed kicker. No, I'm talking about Darren. He goes up and kicks it. Just too creative for me. <laughs> the ball, remember, now has to cross the 35 before Dallas can touch it first. Arizona can touch it anywhere. Sitters got a hand on it and came down with it. Larry Sitters got the football. 325 to go. The ball takes the hop that the Cowboys wanted to. Now, Larry Sinners is going to go up and field this. Watch the hop. There's the big bounce. Larry goes up at the highest point to try and make a play on it, but it almost stays on the field to play. This is one thing that coaches work on, and i got to be honest with you. If you're a football team, when they go special teams and hands teams, guys are always standing around going, yeah, 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 I know what to do. But it becomes an extremely critical point in the game he should have knocked that ball out of bounds and not tried to catch it. Talk about pressure. I agree with you wholeheartedly. He made a tough catch to control it. Morrell, the tailback. They're going to get a big dose of Adrian Morrell. And his job is just to hold on to the football. ABC presents college football's national championship game Monday night at 8 Eastern. Number one, Tennessee against number two, Florida State in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. And ABC Sports and ESPN.com will bring you the first ever enhanced TV during that game. You can play our primetime player interactive game. You'll get live game stats and synchronized graphics. Don't miss it on ESPN.com. When talk about no respect, Tennessee undefeated with a brilliant season, and they are underdogs in that game. Bates lowers his head, gets to the 35. The Cardinals presuming they hang on to this lead will now play the Minnesota Vikings in the second round of the playoff could they perhaps do the same thing defensively I don't think so I just the Vikings bring so many more weapons into the game even from a running standpoint as well as a passing standpoint offensively and they've done a terrific job of covering people one-on-one -on -one. but the Vikings have the ability to go down the field and that's got to be Vince Tobin's biggest concern the other thing, he's going to tell his team, hey, we've been in the playoffs for four weeks already. We've won them all. Let's just keep it going. <laughs> I, I really feel like this football team, they don't know. Other than the fact that it's another football game. Sometimes inexperience can be a big, big advantage because you don't know what to be afraid of. Well, first of all, you know, they're not afraid of anything. But we know one thing. Aeneas Williams will be on Randy Moss. That we do know, right? Now. 
Chavis, Chavis will, will be on Chris Carter. Okay. But the problem is now, <laughs> just throw some problems out. Jake Reed's coming back. Matthew Hatchett's available. Matthew Hatchett's available. Robert Smith is there. Hello. You want to keep going? Andrew Glover. <laughs> Palmer. Palmer. Yeah. But I, I will tell you this. You're, you're absolutely right, Joe, about one thing. This, this team in red, they're going to go up to Minnesota. Hey, no one even expected them to even be, be here, and then they win this football game, and now they're going to go to Minnesota, and I guarantee you, Minnesota, you better not take them lightly because they are a good football team. And one of one of the real stalwarts of the Arizona Cardinals at that at one point, the St. Louis Cardinals, Larry Wilson, their vice president, his brother-in-law Bob Drew is recovering from surgery in the hospital, and I know that his brother. This is not a way to recover. These guys are not no. good to be watching to be recovering from anything. And Jerry Jones is going to be a guy who's going to have to recover from a very, very big defeat. Believe me, he's the last person on the face of this earth that thought this could happen to his football team. No, you're absolutely right. The Cowboys were convinced after scoring all the points that they did in the first two games that they would be able to handle the Arizona Cardinals, especially at home. And that's the second person. Yes. Two minutes to go, third and seven. Dallas with no timeouts. They can't stop the clock anymore. Plummer, naked bootleg. And goes down inbounds. Nice tackle by Antonio Anderson. Now do you go for it on fourth down rather than risk a chance for a block punt? I'll tell you what you do, you pooch punt. Or you, not, excuse me, you'll, you'll, don't get mad at me. Oh. You kick it out of bounds. Out of bounds. Just kick it out of bounds. That's what you want to do. If you're going to punt this ball, you aim for the for be, between the 10-yard line and the goal line. This is a right-footed kicker. You aim to the left-hand side and put it out of bounds where there's just no doubt. Put it up in the stands. I was just going to say, with Dion's on the field, I kick it up into row it, H. It doesn't matter. In this position, all you want to do is back them up and make them go as far as they can possibly go. And now Dion leaves the field. They realize they're not going to have an opportunity to get a return, and there's a delay of game call against the Cardinals. Did you see Flair? Flair's looking downfield to say, is that Dion down there? No, it's not Dion. You'd look too, wouldn't you? Oh, you bet. And I, I can tell you that I, I, I did kick for 11 years, and I would never, never kick the ball in. Well, they didn't until once. Well, one time. And it cost them. It did cost them. Cost them a touchdown. Cowboys looking like they'll come after player. And they do. He got it out of there. Sky high. And the Cardinals down it inside the one. Fred Brock makes the play. A punt of 36, a foot short from going into the end zone. Everybody has done their job today. This is just, I mean, you know, it is a tremendous punt. The ball gets the, the, the bounce. You've got your players down there. Michael, you were talking about the ice cream. Mr. Bidwell. You were talking about the ice cream at Bill yeah. Bidwell. He only has it at home games because on his way home, he stops at this one particular place, he and a friend, and he said he'll never eat three scoops again. He was starting <laughs> here sick, and he did not. This is news. He did not sleep with the football last week. He did not sleep with it. <laughs> Well, there were a lot of tears in the locker room last week. There's going to be a lot more this week. Aikman running for his life. It's picked up by Bennett. Tommy Bennett back to the 10, to the 2. A 42-yard return. And Chavis may have gotten away with one. No flags, and it looked like it might have been pass interference. Well, this is, you know, it's a jump ball. Troy Aikman's just trying to move around and make a play. And Not in doing hit. so, well, you, you put the ball up in the air. And that's all you want to do. Ball goes up in the air. Bennett's right there. They're jumping for it simultaneously. Now he's, so should I run out of bounds? Oh, wait a second. That goal line's getting a little closer. Let me give it a try. I'll just tell you, Jake, you got 48 seconds. Take a knee. You got to play these guys twice a year. <laughs> we talked about the about the lack of downfield passing by the Cowboys. Aikman was oh, 20 yards or more. He was 0 for 6 with two interceptions today. Plummer will take a knee while we have the chance. 
I want to thank Solomon Wilcox, who's done such a great job on the sideline for us. Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, our entire crew, Fred Gridelli, our producer, Mark Payton, our director. They have done an exceptional job with us with ESPN and ABC all year long. Mark Fredrickson, John Aronoff up here in the booth, and our congratulations to Vince Tobin and the Arizona Cardinals. What a great moment for them. It really is, and it, it brings back the one thing that he said last night that really stands out in my mind. He said, we're taking the approach of why not? Why can't we be the team that goes places? Why can't we be the team that can get it done? And they've answered the first phase. That's the end of the ball game. 20 to 7, the Dallas Cowboys. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations.